Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we're gonna discuss the pre-hospital treatment of allergic reactions and anaphylaxis. All right, so jumping right into it. An allergic reaction and an anaphylactic reaction are not the same thing. Generally, an allergic reaction is a very localized issue where anaphylaxis is actually a type of shock that will cause end organ dysfunction. So what are these phenomena? So an allergic reaction is basically when your body overreacts to a substance it's exposed to. Over time, your immune system will get to know certain things, and every time you get exposed to that substance, it's going to react worse and worse and worse. It causes a massive inflammatory response. So that's why you get those hives, you get swelling, potentially itchiness, a scratchy throat. Now, when that progresses into anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis, like I just said, is a type of shock. So that will cause massive vasodilation from these histamines that are released. It can cause airway swelling and a number of other really nasty issues. So these patients will have all the same signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. They might have hives, they might have itchiness, that scratchy throat, but you might start seeing some angioedema, so some swelling in the face, in the airway. You can see that low blood pressure from the massive vasodilation. And then because of that, you have inadequate perfusion. A lot of your organs aren't gonna get the right blood supplies and you're going to see issues arising out of that, such as severe gastric upset. You can have really bad stomach pains. You can have cardiac arrhythmias. You can have signs and symptoms like with chest pain. All of those things can be attributed to basically being exposed to something and having your body react to the substance. So a huge misconception here is that the substance is what causes this when it's really just yourself. So I'm gonna be following my protocols for this video because I feel like they're pretty in line with the national standard. I'm gonna add a couple things there that I think could be put in and then also understand that our protocols aren't perfect so there are a couple things that aren't listed in that that we're still doing because they're listed in the drug formulary that we follow. Even though we're dealing with two different treatment pathways, we're gonna start all our patient contacts the same when it comes to an allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction. Number one, we have to do our initial assessment, which is gonna involve looking at mental status. Are they perfusing their brain? Do they have a patent airway? Do we have severe airway swelling? Are they having trouble breathing? And do they have good circulation? Do they have good uh, pulses in their extremities, good capillary refill? And then is there any trauma nearby? So once we get all of that done, we can initiate O2 therapy, we can start breathing for them if we have to, if it's severe. Now, if it's that severe, obviously that's gonna be an anaphylactic, but we're gonna intervene on those life threats. Once we get past that, and then we're gonna start looking at removing the patient from whatever the source of that is. So if it's a bee sting, we wanna remove that stinger. Now there's a couple tricks to removing stingers. Generally speaking, we wanna to try to avoid taking them out with tweezers because as we uh, grab that stinger, Sometimes you'll actually squeeze a little bit more of that venom into the patient. So the old trick that we use is you'll take a credit card, you'll kind of scrape it over that and you can usually get the stinger out. Periodically, you just have to go to tweezers, try to grip it as close to the point as you can to get it out to avoid squeezing that into the patient. Once we've removed them from the source of the allergic reaction, now we're gonna start going in depth, whether that's uh, allergic or anaphylactic. So for an anaphylactic reaction, we're looking for localized signs. So we've got somebody that was stung, say, on the arm by a bee. They might have swelling in that area, some hives, but we're not gonna see like GI problems. We're not gonna see altered mental status, severe difficulty breathing. And for these patients, what we're gonna do is we're gonna administer diphenhydramine, which is also known as Benadryl. Now, you guys are probably all familiar with Benadryl. It is an over-the-counter medication, really easy to get. We don't give it orally on the ambulance or on the helicopter. We're gonna give it uh, either IV, so intravenous, or I am intramuscular, and our dosing is gonna be between 25 and 50 milligrams, which is relatively standard for the oral doses as well. 
If the localized reaction is particularly severe or if we're worried about it progressing, we may choose to give a steroid such as solumedrol. This is a anti-inflammatory medication that will start acting over about an hour. So what this will prevent is rebound reactions. If we do give epi to somebody, sometimes they can get worse in an hour or two, and hopefully by then the solumedrol will have started to kick in. It's also gonna set us up for success down the road, especially in our really severe cases. Now, if it's not a localized reaction, and this is something that's more systemic, we're worried about it being anaphylactic. In other words, we're seeing an altered mental status, which is a sign that they're not perfusing their brain. They have severe difficulty breathing, really bad airway swelling. Uh, they might be hypotensive, so they've got really low blood pressure because of that inflammatory response. Or we have swelling that's just going all over the body. We're going to move to our anaphylactic protocol. Now, the anaphylactic protocol is going to be the same whether you're a lay person or a professional provider. And the mainstay of treatment is always epinephrine. So epinephrine is is also known as adrenaline. It is a really good bronchodilator. It is also a vasoconstrictor, so we're treating both of the huge issues with anaphylactic shock. In this case, we're gonna give that IM, so that's going to be an injection of one to 1,000 epinephrine, that's the concentration. Sometimes in cardiac uh, patients, when they're in cardiac arrest, we're giving one to 10,000, and that's gonna be a much less concentrated epi that we give IV, but in this case, we're giving an IM, so it's very concentrated. Our dosing for an adult is generally 0.3 milligrams, where a dosing for a child is gonna be 0.15 milligrams. Once we give the epinephrine IM, we're gonna work on getting an IV, and we're still going to give the Benadryl. Now, a lot of people ask, well, if I don't have epinephrine with me, is Benadryl going to save somebody's life? And really, what we know about this process is that Benadryl's not gonna hurt them. If that's all you have, that's all you can do, yeah, go ahead, give them some Benadryl. However, that's not going to make a huge difference on that patient's outcome. Epinephrine remains the really the sole treatment that's going to make a huge difference in these patients. So once we've given our epinephrine, our Benadryl, our Solumedrol, we have to start looking at potentially other interventions. Now on our ambulance, we have the capability of doing what's called a rapid sequence intubation, and in this case, we are empowered to do this early. So this procedure is basically taking a sedative and a paralytic, giving it to the patient, making them go unresponsive so we can put in what's called an endotracheal tube. It's a breathing tube that goes into their mouth, down into their uh, trachea, and that allows us to breathe for them. Now that plastic tube is gonna prevent any swelling in that airway, keep it open for us so we can still facilitate that air exchange. We can escalate our medications a little bit further. So you can give a famotidine drip. So most of you guys know famotidine as Pepsid AC, where your Benadryl is an H1, blocker, your Pepsid is going to be an H2 blocker, so it's just a different kind of antihistamine. Some services give that IV, we don't actually carry it. Now, next up, we can look at giving that epinephrine. We can take it from that one to 1,000 concentration, and we can move to the one to 10,000 concentration, and we can give the same doses except in IV pushes. So intravenous medications will absorb a little bit faster. They're a little bit more potent. So we can start giving that, and that is usually a bridge for us to start an epinephrine infusion. So we take epinephrine, we inject it into an IV bag, and we can start flowing that. Our usual starting dose for that is going to be relatively high at 0.1 micrograms per kilograms per minute, and we can go all the way up to 2 micrograms per kilograms per minute, depending on what the patient needs. If the patient is severely hypotensive still after the epi administration, we are going to initiate fluid boluses of about 20 mLs per kilogram, and that's just going to make the epinephrine we're giving a little bit more effective. A lot of times when you have this really bad inflammatory response, you get some fluid leakage into the interstitial space, and that fluid is just going to replace some of that in the veins, and it's going to let the epi actually squeeze the vasculature down on something instead of squeezing an empty tank. Now, last but not least, if the patient is wheezing, generally speaking in anaphylactic reactions, 
you're gonna hear more of your strider, so that's a really high-pitched sound. It's indicative of an upper airway obstruction where you have those structures swelling. But in some cases, you might have wheezing, whether that's a cardiac wheeze or more of that bronchial constriction. We can give a duoneb, so that's a medication put into a nebulizer and then the patient inhales it. We can also give racemic epi, which is the same thing we were injecting into the arm, then giving IV, then starting infusion in, except it's in an inhaled form. And that's gonna be breathed in through that nebulizer, the same as the albuterol. I know this is a lot of information, but for the layperson or somebody that's witnessing an anaphylactic reaction, know that the mainstay of treatment is always epinephrine. Epinephrine is gonna make the biggest difference for these patients. Don't worry if you don't have Benadryl or famotidine or any of these other meds epinephrine will make the biggest difference. Now, I'm not authorizing you to do this. I'm not telling you to do this. Just know that epinephrine and EpiPens are pretty standard across the board. So somebody's EpiPen, if they forgot it, somebody else's will probably work for them relatively well. Adult standard dosing is 0.3 milligrams, and then your pediatric standard dosing is 0.15 milligrams. While epinephrine can make you feel really bad, it can make you have palpitations, speed your heart rate up, get, make people anxious. Generally speaking, if there's not a severe underlying cardiac condition, it's a pretty safe medication to administer. All of that being said, keep in mind that you have to follow your own policies and procedures. If you're a lay person, you have to understand your local laws and regulations. A YouTube video does not count as training, and I am not authorizing you to do anything. If you have any questions about this video, if you liked this style of video and this topic, let me know so I can do some more. If not, tell me so I can stop immediately. Like I said, if you have questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.